So this is my card. Thank you. If you have any questions, like to talk more, um, just text me or, or give me a call or send me an email and okay. love to chat with you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you stopped. Thank God you. bless you, Kylie. Have a great day. Hey, thanks yeah. for your patience. Yeah, no problem. I'm Tony. I'm Mike. Good to meet you, Mike. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to see if I could grab a Bible. Absolutely. Thanks for, thanks for waiting. There you go. Thank you. Do you have any particular spiritual beliefs yourself? Yeah, I've recently gotten into Christianity. I was never. Tell me about that. I'd love to hear that. So I was never really religious growing up. My parents didn't like bring me up in a religious background. Uh huh. And so, it wasn't until really like last year that I started to critically think about it. Like, yeah. what brought year. that about? Just, I think I got to a point in life where, like, I kind of figured stuff out. Like outside of religion like everything with like school and stuff like that like my direction uh -huh. and so then i was like well where do i see myself in the future and like, started to think about myself more okay introspectively i All guess right. and like my beliefs okay um, and i started to think about my morals and where i want my morals to be and then i had a friend who started talking to me about um jesus in the bible yeah basically you're on campus no he's one of my friends from home he goes oh, okay. to go college um, okay Anyway. Where's home for you? Marion. Marion? Yeah. Illinois. Marion, Illinois. No, Marion, no. Iowa. Oh, Marion, Iowa. Where's yeah. Marion, Iowa? It's uh, Cedar Rapids area. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so pretty Great. close. Okay. Anyway. I'm from Davenport and okay. originally from California, so I'm still okay. learning my way around the gotcha. state. So. Anyway, um, we were at a Cubs game, actually, and we were talking, and he was just like, well, I was kind of in the same space as you, thinking about stuff, and I just realized that my morals align with God and the Bible and, like... I might as well set my belief towards that, um, huh. and that kind of resonated with me because, yeah. okay. like, I didn't really know anything about the Bible, but like, I knew about like kind of the moral ideas and yeah. my moral ideas, and they aligned. And so I started to do more reading. Um, so, Mike, I'll ask you the same question I asked Kylie. Okay. If you were to die today, and I don't want that, okay? But if you were to die today, and you found yourself standing before God, and God asked, Mike, why should I allow you into heaven? What would you say? Like Any answer is fine. Yeah. Just whatever it is that you're thinking. I feel like I, I tried my hardest okay. to be the best person that I could be. Okay. Both All right. to myself and to others. And that and that kind of goes along with what you've told me so far. Yeah. You know, you're you're trying to adhere to a moral compass. Right? Yeah. Jesus said, you'll find it in Matthew chapter five, okay. there in the New Testament, first book of the New Testament. He said, You are to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Now, I'm sixty. I haven't lived a perfect day in my life. How about you? No. No. Okay. And, and none of us can, because the Bible says in the book of Romans, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We were born with a sin nature. One of the first words you probably ever said to your mom and dad was no. Right? You started life defying your parents, right? And, and so did the rest of us, because we were born with that sin nature. And as we grew, we just got better at sin. Just got better at sin. Um, any effort on our part, though, to try to work our way into heaven by being good, if we're going to put any hope in that at all, any hope in our, our own efforts, then according to the word of God, all we have to do is be perfect in thought, word, and deed from cradle to grave. Any hope there? About being perfect yeah. in all those ways? No. Yeah, they, right, right, <laughs> right. No. But, there, but Mike, I want to give you hope. There is hope. See, Mike, it's appointed once for a person to die, the Bible says and then the judgment. We're all gonna die and stand before God. He's gonna judge us, not according to how we see ourselves in the mirror, not according to a moral code that we've established for ourselves. He's not gonna compare Mike to Tony. He's not gonna compare Tony to Mike. He's gonna judge according to a law, a moral code that he's written on our hearts. Have, have you heard of the Ten Commandments? Are you familiar with them a little bit? A little bit, Okay, yeah. all right. So um, some of those are don't lie, don't steal, uh, don't commit adultery. Um, don't murder, honor your mother and father. Those are five of the ten, okay? Have you ever lied? Yeah. Me too. Now, every question I ask you, Mike, if there's a finger pointing at you, there's three pointing back at me, okay? And I've had decades longer than you 
to violate these commands. All right. Um, have you ever stolen anything, even if it's small? Yeah, probably. Okay, all right. Um, ever look at a young lady on this campus and have a thought you shouldn't have? Okay. Um, ever been so angry with someone without acting upon it, without even saying anything, thought in your mind, I hate that person. Bible says whoever hates another person is a murderer. That's how high God's standard is. Murder begins with hatred in the heart, moves to the mind where it formulates a plan, whether to do something or say something, and then maybe to the hand or the mouth where it carries out the act, or maybe not. But God sees the murder as complete when the hatred starts in the heart, okay? And just based on those four, you haven't honored your parents, right? But have you perfectly obeyed them all your life? No, right, and again, me too, all right? So when you die and stand before God, in part, we just covered five, right? He'll see you as a lying, thieving, adulterer, and a murderer at heart who dishonors his parents, who's tried to live a good life. Is he going to find you innocent or guilty of breaking his law? Like guilty? Yeah, yeah. Not even a problem. Right. right, definitely. Yeah, and me too. And me too. And because God is good, because he's holy and righteous and just, he must punish sin, law breaking, his law, and that punishment is eternity in hell. That's the bad news. The good news, though, is that the way out of that, the way of escape, the way of salvation, isn't you trying to live up to your moral code. And it's not you trying to live up to his moral code because he expects perfection and we're incapable, okay? He's provided a way of salvation that isn't from us, it's for us. God the Father sent his son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, without sin. As God in the flesh, he lived a life of perfection for some 33 years that you and I can't live for 33 seconds. Yet even though he knew no sin, and you probably heard some of this as I was talking to Kylie, even though he knew no sin, and even though God the Father gave all judgment to God the Son, he voluntarily submitted himself to the torturous, bloody death of a Roman cross. He died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment you and I rightly deserve for our sins against God. And then he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. God's expectation of you isn't to work your way into heaven. God's expectation of you is to receive the gift. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 that the wages, what we earn for our sin, is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says it's by grace we're saved, through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's a gift from God, not as a result of works, so that no man may boast. Your last birthday, did your parents give you a gift or gifts? Would your parents have been insulted if you broke out your wallet and said, here, Dad, I want to pay you for this? Probably. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what man-made religion does. It takes the gift that God offers to mankind and says, no, it's not good enough. I want to work my way in. Or I want to attempt to bribe the judge by my own perceived goodness, <laughs> by my good works. But if God does a miraculous work in your heart, Mike, literally causes you to be born again, Jesus said, unless a person is born again, they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. If he does that work in you and literally takes a heart of stone that had made you an enemy with God and gives you a heart of flesh, you'll begin to love God. You'll want to live a life pleasing to him, not to bribe the judge, not to earn his love, not to, not to work for it, not because you're afraid of losing it, but because you're so thankful for the gift, see? So then, the, then trying to live by God's standard is a means of worship to the God who saves you as opposed to a means of trying to bribe the judge who's going to sentence you. You see the difference? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. 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 And, and so my assurance of, of salvation, my assurance of heaven comes not by anything I've done, but by what Christ has done on my behalf. I don't look into the mirror for my salvation. I look to Jesus for my salvation, who died a death he didn't deserve so a wretched sinner like me can receive the gift. So my encouragement to you, young man, is to receive the gift. Receive the gift. He'll forgive your sin. He'll remove it as far as the east is from the west. He'll adopt you as a son, never to turn you away. 
And Jesus has already gone to prepare a place for you, it says in, in, in the gospel. That he's already gone to prepare a place for you if you'll but put your faith and your trust in him. That's good news. That is good news. Yeah. All right, I got to get to class. All right. Money. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. If you have any questions, want to grab a cup of coffee or something, talk more about it as you're reading that. I put a bookmark in there at a great place to start. Okay. It, uh, got, read all of it, okay. obviously. It's all God's word. But I put a bookmark in the Gospel of John. Okay. And it's a great place to start for someone who's not real familiar with the Bible or hasn't read it a lot. And you're going to hear many of the things that, that I shared with you this morning. Amazing. Okay. Thank God you, bless buddy. you, Mike. Hey, man, thanks for your yep. time. Have a great rest of your day. All right, man. Thank you're you. an answer to prayer. Thank you.